Today we're taking a look at the JL Cooper Synapse MIDI routing system. This is an old school MIDI patch bay with 16 inputs and 20 outputs. For its time in the early 1990s, but especially by today's standards, this is one of the most powerful MIDI patch bays you'll ever come across. There are no USB or Firewire ports since both of those technologies weren't around until the late 90s. And although they were common for the time, there is no serial port connector for interfacing with an old Macintosh computer. This is purely a 5-pin MIDI connector setup. Beyond the impressive number of inputs and outputs, there are also processing features to manipulate the MIDI data flowing into and out of the Synapse. For example, you can filter out extraneous MIDI channels en route to one or more devices, Unwanted pitch bend or modulation data can be removed as it arrives at the patch bay input, and you can transpose notes in real time with the Synapse. These features would, of course, be of limited use if you couldn't store the instructions for the Synapse to recall later, so 64 onboard memory locations are provided with the assistance of a lithium battery backup. You can also store more sets of memory locations via a system-exclusive dump to an outboard device such as a modern computer with a MIDI interface, or if you're really into the era, a standalone sequencer or MIDI data recorder with a floppy drive. If you have a massive interconnected MIDI setup with multiple devices that require patch changes during a performance, the Synapse affords you the ability to send program changes via a built-in patch map system. 16 program change commands can be sent in any combination of MIDI channels and MIDI outputs. And each patch map can be stored as part of a memory location. The Synapse can be controlled remotely via system exclusive messages, which can be handy in a recording studio setup or on stage. And even though the Synapse cannot generate MIDI timecode, it can be displayed in real time on the unit and routed to any MIDI output which is useful for synchronizing tape machines, sequencers, and even modern DAW systems. With so many features in one patch bay, it's not surprising that you won't find an endless supply of these machines on the used market. People with large MIDI setups rarely want to let these things go. There are other MIDI patch bays out there, of course, some with serial or USB ports as well as 5-pin MIDI, but nearly all of them top out at 8 inputs and 8 outputs. So the JLC Synapse is fairly unique, and it's built like a tank. The power switch for the Synapse is located on the back of the unit. I leave mine in the on position by default and control the power from an outboard power conditioner. When powered up, the Synapse always starts in program mode. In this mode, you can recall one of 64 memory locations. Enter the two-digit number for the program and the corresponding memory location will be presented on the far left. Across the front panel, there are 20 LED digits, each with a button underneath numbered 1 to 20. The LED represents a specific input to the Synapse, and each of the 20 buttons represent a specific output on the Synapse. Here we can see that whatever is hooked up to input number 1 is being routed to outputs 1 through 20. In a moment, I'll show you how to change those inputs for each output and store that as a program or memory location. The Synapse can be completely reset, wiping out all program memory locations by holding buttons 1, 2, and 3 simultaneously while powering up. Now, programs 1 through 43 have all 20 outputs driven by input number 1. Locations 44 through 64 have their 20 outputs driven by different unanimous inputs, as you see here. These, of course, can be modified and overwritten however you like. Thus far, entering program memory locations has involved the use of buttons 1 through 9. To jump to program 50, for instance, press the 5 and then the 10 button. 10 is 0 in this instance. Now that's an easy mental correlation to make on the fly, but how about this obstacle? There is only one LED digit per output button, so what happens after the number 9? Well, the Synapse rips a page out of the hexadecimal playbook. You see, 10 is represented by the letter A, 11 is represented by the letter B. Uh, I think you get the idea. For example, program 52 
has input 10, or letter A, directed to all 20 outputs. Program 53 has input 11, or letter B, routed to all 20 outputs. Silk screened on the back of the synapse are the hex letters corresponding to the numeric value by the MIDI jacks. Notice the hex values end with input 16, or G, since only input values are selected to route to the 20 outputs on the synapse. So now let's look at how to assign inputs to outputs and store them to a program memory location. In my typical studio setup, program 11 is what I use, so today I'm editing program 64 for this demo. Currently, all 20 outputs receive input number 1, so let's change some of those. By pressing the mode button once, the two-digit display goes blank, and now we're in assignment mode, so I'll assign input 6 to output 1, input 5 to output 2, input 4 to output 3, input 3 to output 4, and input 2 to output 5. To save these, I hold the right button down while selecting 6 and 4, since I want to overwrite 64. I like to check it, so I'm going to go back to 11. You can see everything changes back to input 1 across the board. But now let's take a look at 64. And there, we can confirm that our changes have been written to program 64. Let's tap the mode button to make other assignments. Individual outputs can also have no input if needed. To make that happen, repeatedly press an input assignment button to cycle through all of the channels. Remember, channels 10 through 16 register on the LED as A through G. After G, there is no character displayed. That indicates that there is no input assigned to that output. So in this example, as you'll soon see, outputs 1 through 5 will have no input assigned to them. Outputs 6 through 20, however, still have input 1 assigned. I'll save the latest changes by holding right and selecting 6, then 4. Now program 64 is complete. And while it's not necessary to choose a different program number and come back to what you just saved, I like to double check. So 64 is in fact saved with outputs 1 through 5 having no assignments. The patch map feature allows program change commands to be sent to connected MIDI gear. So let's see how to do that. And just for clarification, for this example, I've reset program memory location 64 so that input 1 feeds all 20 outputs. Memory location 64 is already loaded, so while holding the mode button, pressing button 18 opens the program change page, indicated by PC in the two-digit display. The patch map uses only the first 10 buttons to manipulate program change command settings, so let's focus there. There are 16 steps possible per memory location. Each step has an output assignment, a program number assignment, and a MIDI channel assignment. Currently, the right side of the display states that we are on step number 1. Output 20 is selected on the left portion of the display, and the three digits following the two-digit output assignment is for selecting a program number between 1 and 128 that is correlated to an outboard MIDI synthesizer or MIDI effects box. It could be any piece of MIDI gear, really. You could just press button 5 repeatedly to reach the desired number, but if the number you're looking for is closer to 128 than 8, pressing button 4 advances the count by tens. The 3 button can be a decrement key or increment key, depending on where the second place digit is sitting. The final component is selecting a MIDI channel to transmit the program change. Let's choose, I don't know, MIDI channel 1. Now, Synapse Output 20 will transmit program number 001 on MIDI channel 1 to a MIDI device connected to this patch bay. And take note that advancing on to steps 2 through 16 reveals that no outputs have been set. This, by default, guards against unintentional transmission of program numbers on miscellaneous MIDI channels. Let's do another demo. I'll select memory location 64, and while holding the mode button, I'll tap button 18 to get us into the patch map. And now we can decide which outputs 
program numbers, MIDI channels, and step numbers we want to invoke to be saved with good old memory location 64. I'm not going to do anything really crazy. Let's just start with step number one. Now we need to select an output since there is no output selected by default. Let's select Synapse output number five. On output number five, we'll throw program number five out across MIDI channel five. Let's set up step number two. Step number two has no output, so let's assign an output. Synapse output number six will send program number six on MIDI channel six. Now let's do step number three. Synapse output number seven will transmit program number seven and we'll do that across MIDI channel seven. And let's do one more step. Step four will have output number eight and we'll send program number, yeah, let's not do eight, let's do, let's do 88, yeah. And we'll transmit that on channel eight, MIDI channel eight. So. We'll hold down the right button while we select 6, then 4, and now this patch map is part of program 64. So I'll back out to patch 11 and then go back to patch 64 just to verify that when I hold down the mode button and tap 18, the patch map will show in fact that step 1 does include output 5, program number 5, and MIDI channel 5. Step two includes output six, program number six, and MIDI channel six. Step three has output seven, program seven, and channel seven. And step four, of course, is output eight, program 88, and MIDI channel eight. Nothing, of course, on steps five through 16, since we didn't program those. So it's a success. The final thing I want to show you is how to enable the MIDI timecode display feature on the Synapse. To accomplish this, press the Mode button and tap button 19. All LEDs will go out except for those related to hours, minutes, seconds, and frames for the incoming MIDI timecode. And as you can see, all 20 assignment buttons are disabled in this mode. To exit MTC display, just tap the right button. A few footnotes regarding the JLC Synapse. The patch map feature allows you to send program changes to connected MIDI devices, but there is no way to send bank changes. This is important if you have a synth or other MIDI gear with more than one collection of 128 patches to choose from. A workaround could be to either have the receiving synthesizer set up with the proper bank pre-selected, or more practically have a sequencer or MIDI controller send the bank change message through the synapse prior to selecting the memory location on the front panel of the synapse. It may just be easier to send bank and program changes from a sequencer or MIDI file playback device. It's just a thought. The buttons on the Synapse are mm, finicky. Some of this could be the age of the unit, but I've also owned a JL Cooper MSB Plus Rev 2, and it exhibits the same sort of touchiness. By this I mean that the little chiclet buttons easily double or triple press, flying past a command or pushing past a deeper menu page. Even with Contact Cleaner, the situation improves only slightly. The workaround here is simply to keep pressing a button or a series of buttons until you cycle back through where you intended to be in the first place. It's a minor frustration compared to all the patch bay does really well. And as was typical for this era of electronic instruments, this patch bay lacks a user replaceable battery. Coin batteries such as the one installed in the Synapse were often soldered to the main board. Back in the day, it probably was a cost-saving measure and an opportunity to have an authorized JL Cooper service center charge the gear owner a small fee for an easy task. The workaround here is to bravely open up the patch bay and replace the factory battery with a new battery placed in a coin battery holder. Patience, a steady hand, and about $3 is all you need to make this happen. In my research, I never learned of a button combo that would reveal the Synapse firmware version. To discover the firmware version in this model, 
you have to pop the hood and view the chip label on the EEPROM itself. I got pretty lucky in my search for a fully working Synapse and landed with firmware version 1.04 after coming across a bunch of older chips. So if you know of any differences between the firmware versions or if something beyond version 1.04 exists, let me know in the comments. Interestingly, JLC notes in the manual that a power conditioner with an AC line filter is recommended. This is an excellent suggestion that I think has been downplayed or completely forgotten about in recent times. Audio gear greatly benefits from these conditioners and it makes sense that computerized musical instruments and MIDI gear could benefit from surge protection and dips and spikes in voltage. Especially with older, more temperamental gear, a power conditioner can be a terrific investment to prevent repairs from electrical damage. Like a lot of MIDI and studio gear in the 80s and early 90s, if it didn't have an external power brick, it had a permanent power cord. Removable IEC power cables became more common in the mid to later part of the 1990s. If the cord on the Synapse gets damaged, it'll be a hassle to replace. The transformer inside the box may be a challenge to source and swap out as well, but so far everything works without an issue. Since its release in 1990, the Synapse has been a flexible routing system that still has a home with both vintage and modern MIDI setups. If you'd like to see more features of the Synapse demonstrated, or if you have questions, leave a comment below and I'll do what I can.